going to do some experiments on different sorts of watercolour paper today and I'm using St Cuthbert's Mill papers. I'm going to try three different kinds. I'm going to paint some little beach scenes on different sorts of paper, different sorts of surfaces and textures and I'm going to use some sketches that I've done previously on the beach. I'm starting off with a piece of Saunders Waterford, 300 gram, cold pressed, with a nice rough texture. I think it's a medium rough. So I'm just going to make a few marks of flesh colour to, to position these figures. I try to very often use a, a paper that's as heavy as almost as a board um, so that when I divide it up into pieces or even use it as a full sheet it will not buckle up if you're putting on a wash and the washes seem to be breaking up nicely and that's what I look for in a watercolour paper is for the colours that I might have mixed together. They separate on the paper as it settles you can see these tiny little areas of wash have started to break up into their component colours as they dry and that's one of the very attractive things about watercolour. I'm just going to make a couple more little marks here and then I'm going to put it aside and let it dry so I can paint the background without it running in a minute and I'm going to try the same sort of exercise on a completely different paper which is called Milford. This is made also by St Cuthbert's Mill and it has the same sort of roughish texture as the Saunders Waterford but it's it's much more highly sized so it's not so absorbent. I haven't used this paper before it's going to be interesting to see how it reacts to putting the paint on. So again I'm just going to loosely take some, some little studies as a starting point to get these figures in position. It seems to be very forgiving. I'm going to try putting on a, a shape and then lifting it off again if I imagine this person being slightly in the wrong place. I'll see what happens if I try to just remove it altogether. And it seems to have lifted pretty well without leaving a stain. And this is thanks to the size or the, the surface of the paper, the treatment of the surface of the paper, which allows you to just lift straight off and there's really very little left there. I'm going to leave that one now and uh, let it dry so that I can come back to it in a minute when when it's dried off and I'm going to start on a different paper and this time I'm going to use a Bockingford paper. I'm very familiar with Bockingford. I use it a lot and it's it's a, a an easy paper to work with. It's forgiving. It, the paint lifts off it. It's another of the St Cuthbert's Mill range but this time I'm working on a cream paper but the good thing about a tinted paper is it it gives you an immediate tone and if you were to be using body color or white crayon on top or anything additional to your watercolors white gouache anything opaque that would be an advantage to have a tone on your paper already and the surface is cold pressed fairly rough so it's got a nice jaggedy little tooth in it and it takes the watercolour washes beautifully allowing them to break up like that in the as it fills the little crags of the paper but it's actually rather nice and it's giving a an evening feel to the to this seaside scene because there's sort of warmth to the light so I can see this would be good for sunsets or possibly interiors where you've got warm electric light. 
going to do a little bit of horizon here with perhaps a reflection and because it's tinted it, it's not going to leave me white but it'll wherever I leave the paper bare there'll be a, a slight creamy hint so there we I've tried three different papers Bockingford Waterford Saunders and Milford and I think all of them have slightly different qualities they're all very easy to work with and I'll probably stick with the the white Waterford Saunders which has always been my favourite. <laughs>